relationship to Legacy Club at Aliqua Lakes in Longwood, Florida. And welcome to KennedyGolf.com, where our goal is to help students of every level improve their game and increase their enjoyment. So come on in, stay as long as you like. Your feedback's always welcome, and I look forward to helping you with your game. Thanks a lot. Okay, so here we are. Again, just to reiterate, this dowel, this, these two wooden dowels, that's your target line. Okay. I've got two yellow rods, as you can see, both inside of this line. That's the, kind of representing the, the visual equivalent of the, of the angled plane. So those are kind of representing an arc drawn on the ground. We're not gonna pay so much attention to this side because the slicer, would tend to swing across the ball, their club goes in on this arc too soon, okay? Uh, over on to the right of this target line on this side, I've got an orange rod and then another yellow rod. So this yellow rod is a continuation of this line. So that's basically the path or the club or the sweet spot coming from inside of the target line and moving to the right of the target but also to the right of this orange line. So this orange line is where I would like my club face to be pointing or facing at the moment of impact, okay? So again, if we have this relationship, the club face that's to the right of or open to the target, but to the left of or close to the path, the ball would draw every single time, okay? So, the exaggerated drill that I would recommend to slicers would be if I were to set up normally which we'll say is feet, knees, hips, shoulders, eyes uh, parallel to my target line and we're going to adjust that a little bit we're going to play the ball kind of in the, I've got a six iron here first of all I'm going to play the ball kind of towards the middle of my stance I don't want to get too far forward again I'm going to just Pull my right foot back a couple of inches. I'm going to pre-rotate my shoulders and my hips. So I'm going to close them a bit. Okay. And I'm going to aim my club face to the right of the target, but I'm going to preset it aiming at this uh, orange rod because that's where I want my club face looking when it hits the ball. Okay. So I'm presetting a little bit closed. I'm going to push my hands and the handle a little bit ahead of that club head. It's ahead of the ball. Now, what I'm going to try to do is move the club or swing it almost in the direction that my stance is going. So, again, I'm going to bring my hands and the club inward. I'm going to turn as I do, keep my head steady. Then, I'm going to try to limit the amount of rotation of the body away from that target line. Okay, I know if we look at a Tour Pro at impact, we'll see that his hips are some degree open in relation to that target line, but we're not going to focus on that right now, not for you slicers. Okay, so I'm going to move the club in and turn, and then I'm going to try to swing that club back down from the inside here and swing it out to the right over this yellow shaft here, to the right of the target. Again, if I do that and my club face is slightly closed away from that, the ball will draw, okay? So the first ball I'll hit, I'm going to do all those things, and when I swing through, I'm gonna keep my body almost closed to the target. I'm not gonna let it turn this way. This is gonna look a little awkward, but I'm just gonna swing my arms back through the ball out to the right, and I'm gonna keep my body from doing this. That's going to look something like this. That ball started into the tree line there, and it curved back. It ended up in line with where this shaft's pointing. Okay, so I intend I I turned almost as much as I comfortably could without moving off the ball on the backswing, and then I just tried to swing the arms and club out through the ball. Now I could take that one step further. try to move my weight, my lower body weight, in that same direction. So I'd, my hips would be 
turn back, but then they'd feel like they're staying closed longer. They're almost sliding diagonally to the right, as opposed to turning them this way. The faster I turn my hips and shoulders away from that target line on the downswing, even if I'm reasonable position here, the faster I'm going to start throwing the club out this way. The club face then starts closing. The club comes down too steep. It starts passing the handle too soon. So it starts moving across the ball or to the left, usually to the left of my club face. So the ball might start to the left, but it slices. So the opposite, in and turn. As I direct that club out, I'm gonna to try to shift my weight in that same diagonal direction. Same thing, the ball started in the trees, turned back to the left. Now, understand that I'm doing that without in consciously rolling my hands and wrists or this club over. You'll hear a lot of people talk about the release as being this ex really excessive rotation and turning the right forearm over the left. That might benefit someone to the degree that uh, they deliver the club into the ball properly. But once the ball's struck, this motion beyond it really has no influence on the ball flight. It's a matter of what's, what the face looks like at the moment it's hitting the ball and what the path is doing. And technically, uh, I could make the ball draw without consciously turning this over at all. Okay, and that's because I have the ability to move my path to the right of the club face. Okay, so try that drill. When you get to the point where your balls are starting to the right and curving back to the left, then you could start squaring your stance up. Again, I would encourage you to keep trying to move the hand path and the club path inward and turn. Keep trying to hit out through the ball. Limit to some degree your, your, the tendency, the natural inclination that we all have to turn or spin the hips this way. And I promise you, your slice will start going away. So I hope this has been useful to you. I know it's a lot of information, but uh, you know, go through it at your pace. If you have any questions about this or anything else, please feel free to contact me at kennedygolfpro.com and uh, I'll be happy to answer your, any of your questions. Thanks a lot and uh, I hope this finds you well.